Hi guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to create a macro that's going to insert a drop down menu into a cell you specify. This is a continuation from the last video that I made uh, where we created a macro that would insert a new row into a cell you specify which was good for th keeping things in chronological order. Once you get a large spreadsheet you can keep the things at the top and you're not faffing about with, with manually clicking anywhere. Um, this is the macro we discussed last time. You'll see as we click the button a new row is created and that uh, we have formatted that with grid lines. This is a bit more advanced. Uh, what we're going to do is add into the code an area where we can define what parameters can be in that cell. So here for instance it's not applied it yet because the code's not in but what we're going to do is we're going to insert a new row and also this cell here you can only put in the cell the values you specify which we're going to reference and also it'll create a drop down menu okay I'm going to show you the code now this is the whole of the code that's going to be there but the part we're interested in is this part here I'm just going to copy that in Okay, as you can see here, there's, there are going to be some parts that you're going to want to modify to tailor this to what you want. Um, here, where it says sheets and range, this is the cell we're going to apply this to. So you can see it says sheet one, range B4. So if we go to the documents, we can see sheet one and the range that I'm going to put it in is B4. So what if you want to put it in? Uh, C4 that will be the cell you wanted to put it in and so that's your cell you would reference in the code okay this part here stays the same the only part you now need to change is this part here after the equal sign here you can see sheet 2 because that's where my data is stored and the range now you're going to want to keep the dollar signs in uh, it gives it an ab absolute reference so leave them in I know they're not probably required but it is good practice okay we can see here a1 so a dollar a dollar one colon dollar a dollar five that's basically saying a1 to a5 so if we go to sheet 2 a1 to a5 are the parameters that I have the good thing about this, keeping on another sheet, is that you can hide this sheet. Right click and press hide. The sheet vanishes so that you can't really tamper with it. Go back to the code. Okay, that's all the code we're going to need. So if you was going to do ex do exactly the same here, I know that's highly unlikely. Um, sheet 2 is where you have the data. Again, if you change those names, reflect that in the code and if you've got your values here if you've got 10 values 5 will become 10 if there was in the second row on the sheet so if there was in B you'd put B it's pretty self explanatory okay I'm going to close that down and we're going to run the macro again make sure you go into design mode and double click to get the code out of design mode when you want to run the macro. Okay, you can see that a drop down box has been applied. You can only insert these parameters now. So, anything else in this cell that you want to type in that isn't within that list isn't allowed. So, computer isn't in the list. The value you've entered is not valid. If you do, let's say you're doing this for your own products and you, you get another product on the on the um, into your into your stock all you need to do is go into here add the value to the bottom and you need to change that in the code I'll show you how to do that so we've gone from basically having five values to six so we want to add this six value in you just in, you just increase the value by one so instead of going to a5 we're going to go down to a6 close that, 
come out of design mode when we run that you can see computers appeared and that will change only that cell okay guys that's pretty much it as always I will put the code within the description below feel free to use that for your own for your own personal uses hope you've enjoyed the video see you next time